Hello everyone, welcome to Calcium Baby. Today we're gonna discuss a very important topic which is beta oxidation of fatty acid. In our previous video of lipid digestion and absorption, we came to know that one of the end product of lipid digestion is fatty acid. In beta oxidation, the fatty acid is broken down to form acetyl coir. As it is a breakdown process, that means here the large fatty acid molecules are broken down into smaller molecules with release of energy. So it is a catabolic pathway. Now let's see why it is called beta oxidation. This is a fatty acid molecule. We know that the carbon which is attached to the functional group is called the alpha carbon. In case of fatty acid, the functional group is the carboxyl group. The carbon which is adjacent to the alpha carbon is called beta carbon. For beta oxidation process to occur, the fatty acid should be in the form of fatty acyl coir. That means it will look like this. This process is called beta oxidation because in this process, the beta carbon of fatty acid is oxidized. After oxidation in beta carbon, fatty acid is broken down into acetyl coir, which is a two carbon compound and fatty acyl coir, which is two carbon shorter than the previous one. The acetyl coir will enter into the TC cycle and produce ATP, which will be discussed in a separate video. And the two carbon shorter fatty acid will again enter into the beta oxidation and this process will keep repeating until it is fully oxidized. Now let's define beta oxidation. Beta oxidation is a catabolic pathway where two carbon fragments of carboxyl end of fatty acid coir are successively broken down into acetyl coir. So here, the substrate is fatty acid and the product is acetyl coir. Let's see the sites where beta oxidation process occurs. It occurs in the heart, lung, liver, kidneys, skeletal muscle, adipose tissue, testis, etc. But remember, beta oxidation never occurs in the brain because fatty acid can't cross the barrier of the brain. So fatty acid can never work as a fuel for the brain. Beta oxidation never occurs in the RBC as well because it doesn't have mitochondria. On the other hand, fatty acid works as the main fuel for the cardiac muscle because cardiac muscle needs a lot of ATP in a short amount of time. And beta oxidation is the process by which we can get a lot of ATP in a short amount of time. In the cell, all enzymes which are required for beta oxidation are present in the matrix of mitochondria. So beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. There are mainly three steps of beta oxidation. First of all, fatty acid is activated into fatty acyl coir, which occurs in the cytoplasm. The second step is transport of activated fatty acyl coir into mitochondria by carnitine shuttle pathway. And the third step is beta oxidation proper, where the bond between alpha and beta carbon is broken down. It occurs in the mitochondria. Suppose it's the cytoplasm of a cell. After a fatty acid enters into the cell, the fatty acyl coir synthesis enzyme, which is also called thiokinase enzyme, will convert fatty acid into fatty acyl coir. For converting, it requires 2 ATP. So, 2 ATP is used. After the activation of fatty acyl coir, the second stage is transport of activated fatty acyl coir into mitochondria. We know there are two membranes of mitochondria. Suppose it is the outer membrane and it's the inner membrane. Now the problem is fatty acyl coir is permeable to outer membrane but it is impermeable to inner mem membrane. So it needs a carrier to help it pass through the inner mitochondrial membrane. The compound which helps uh, to transport fatty acid is called carnitine. Chemically carnitine is synthesized from methionine and lysine. The mechanism which is used to translocate fatty acyl coir into mitochondrial membrane is called carnitine shuttle mechanism. It is called so because after transporting fatty acyl coir through the inner mitochondrial membrane, carnitine goes back to the cytoplasm to translocate another fatty acyl coir into the mitochondrial matrix. So carnitine shuttles between the cytoplasm and mitochondria. Let's see how this process occurs. At first, fatty acyl coir transfers its acyl group to carnitine and forms fatty acyl carnitine. This process occurs in the intermembrane space with the help of carnitine transferase enzyme. The newly formed acyl carnitine can easily pass through the inner mitochondrial membrane and enter into the matrix of mitochondria.
Translocase enzyme helps in this regard. Now, in the mitochondrial matrix, acyl carnitine again transfers its acyl group to CoA and regenerates fatty acyl CoA in the mitochondria. Then, after transfer, carnitine will go back to the intermembrane space and transfer more acyl group. So, by this carnitine shuttle mechanism, fatty acyl CoA finally reaches to the mitochondrial matrix and it is ready to be oxidized. Now, the main part of beta oxidation will begin, which is called beta oxidation proper. Beta oxidation proper has four steps. As it is called beta oxidation, the so the first step will be oxidation. The second step is hydration, which means addition of water. The third step is again oxidation. And the fourth step is cleavage of terminal 2 carbon to produce acetyl coir. So let's see what happens in the individual steps. The first step is oxidation, which is also called dehydrogenation. That means removal of hydrogen atom. Here, hydrogen atom from alpha and beta carbon are removed. So, a trans double bond is formed between alpha and beta carbon. This is now called alpha-beta unsaturated fatty acyl coil. These two hydrogen atoms which have been removed reduces fatty FAD to FADH2. So, it is a site of ATP production. The second step is called hydration which means addition of water. Here water is added across the trans carbon carbon double bond and it forms a hydroxyl group at the beta end of now it is called beta hydroxy fatty acyl coil. The third step is again oxidation. Here hydroxyl group of the beta carbon is oxidized and it forms a keto group on the beta carbon. Now it's called beta keto fatty acyl coil. Here, the removed two hydrogen reduces NAD to and uh, to NADH2 is formed. So, it is a site of ATP generation. The fourth step is cleavage. Now that the bond between alpha and beta carbon has become weak, it is broken down, producing an acetyl CoA and a fatty acyl CoA, which is two carbon shorter than the previous one. As the bond between alpha and beta carbon is broken down, so the process is called beta oxidation. Let's review the process. At first, fatty acid is converted into fatty acyl CoA, then fatty acyl CoA is translocated to mitochondrial matrix, and then by four step process oxidation, hydration, oxidation, and cleavage fatty acyl CoA is finally broken down to acetyl CoA and fatty acyl CoA, which is two carbon shorter than the previous one. This acetyl CoA will enter into TC cycle, and in the TC cycle, one molecule of acetyl CoA will produce 12 ATP. We'll discuss the process in a separate video. And the fatty acyl CoA will repeat the same sequence of beta oxidation until all of it has turned into acetyl CoA. Now let's see how much ATP is generated from beta oxidation. If a 16 carbon fatty acid enters into beta oxidation, it will go through 7 cycles to be fully oxidized. When it is completely oxidized, it will produce 8 acetyl CoA. There's an easy trick. If the number of carbon is n, where n is an even number, the number of produced acetyl CoA will be n by 2, and the number of cycle will be n by 2 minus 1. For example, if a 18 carbon fatty acid enters into beta oxidation, the number of cycle will be 18 by 2 minus 1, that means 8 cycle, and the number of acetyl CoA production will be 18 by 2 equals to 9. We know that from each cycle, 1 FADH2 and 1 NADH2 is produced. So, in case of a 16 carbon palmitic acid, from 7 cycle, there will be 7 FADH2 and 7 NADH2. We know in the respiratory chain, 2 ATPs are formed from 1 FADH2 and 3 ATPs are produced from 1 NADH2. So, from 7 <coughs> FADH2, there is 14 ATP, and from 7 NADH2, there is 21 ATP. On the other hand, from one molecule of acetyl CoA, there is production of 12 ATP. So, from 8 acetyl CoA, there is 8 into 12, that is 96 ATP. So, in total, the ATP production is 131 ATP. You might remember, during fatty acid activation in cytoplasm, two ATPs were expanded. So the net production is 129 ATP. So let's see if it's a stearic acid, which 
uh, which is an ethyl carbon fatty acid, how many ATPs will produce? Here, n equals to 19. So, acetyl coil production is 9 and the number of cycle will be 8. So, the number of ATP production will be 9 into 12 equals to 108 from acetyl coil, uh, 16 from FADH2 and 24 from NADH2. So, 148 ATP and 2 ATP is expanded. So, 146 ATP is generated in total. That was in case of even number of carbon. You might be wondering what will happen in the odd chain fatty acid. In, uh, in odd chain fatty acid, there is odd number of carbon. In this case, at the final stage, a 3 carbon propionyl coy will be generated. Uh, suppose the number of carbon is n, which is an odd number. As at the end, a 3 carbon product will be generated, so the number of cycle will be n minus 3 by 2. So the number of acetyl coy will be uh, the production of acetyl coy will be the same. If it's a 17 carbon fatty acid, the number of cycle will be 17 minus 3 by 2, that is 7. So in 7 cycles, 7 acetyl coy will be produced, and at the end of 7th turn, a 3 carbon propionyl coy will be generated. So this is how fatty acid oxidized by the process of beta oxidation. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe our channel.